I know it doesn't look very glamorous, but I'm talking to you from dab smack in the middle of one of Hollywood's biggest studios, Universal. And lurking somewhere behind me in one of these unattractive looking trailers is the creative force behind one of the most successful low budget horror movies of recent years, The Evil Dead, and its imaginatively titled sequel, The Evil Dead 2, Mr. Sam Raimi. They, uh, I was just wondering, do they have blood banks in England? No, but they have a Liverpool. <laughs> when The Evil Dead was released in 1982, it attracted rave reviews. Stephen King called it the most ferociously original horror film of the year. Yet the film had initially been turned down by every American distributor who had seen it. The Evil Dead was an independent production, financed by a group of doctors, lawyers and dentists from America's Midwest. And it marked the feature film debut of writer and director Sam Raimi, who remarkably was only 19 at the time. There are two schools of thought, I think, for horror filmmakers. One is that the audience can always create something more horrible than you can show them. And the other school of thought is show them, show them, show them everything. And I believe that both is true. I believe the audience can come up with something more horrible in their minds than I can show them, provided they're given the raw materials to construct something. And I also believe that I have got some pretty horrible things to show myself, so I try and mix and match. I try and scare them and weird them out with visuals, and I try and leave room for them to add their own ingredients to create. Although this was his first feature, Sam had already directed a handful of Super 8 movies, which had given him the chance to develop a distinctive and confident style. How did you get started in filmmaking in the first place? What kind of movies were you making before The Evil Dead? Before The Evil Dead, my, par my friends and myself, just a group of school chums and, and, and I, would make Super 8 uh, comedies, Three Stooges comedies. There was a nucleus of about six of us who had this interest, and we all were split apart in different neighborhoods. We had a little neighborhood here, and Sam was over in his little neighborhood making Super 8 movies. He was, Sam did a lot of magic, and so films seemed like a natural extension for him to do that. So he was doing these silly little movies and I was doing um, silly little movies. And another guy, Scott Spiegel, who co-wrote Evil Dead 2, was making like Three Stooge ripoffs where he'd use the actual soundtrack but put in his own visuals. And then we kind of all hooked up in high school and then we found that, you know, one guy had costumes and another guy had some, had a good camera. So we combined all of our facilities and then we were able to on weekends we just would go out and shoot bruce campbell starred in every super 8 movie that we made because very simply he was the good looking one and still is so we said hmm the girls like you we'll put you in front of the camera the girls don't like us we'll stay behind the camera and uh only when bruce was unavailable would we put ourselves in front of the camera but you, you show some raw acting ability in those why didn't you stay in front more why did you <laughs> stay? i don't I, I don't think I showed any acting ability. And I stick my face in any movie that I can, truthfully, shamelessly, to get my mug on the screen. Why are the Three Stooges such an influence on you? What do you like about them? I like the fact, I like their physical comedy and their sound effects. <laughs> you know, the, the hyper real uh, shticks that they do. And um, they just make me laugh. They just make me laugh and I've seen them make big audiences laugh in the, in the theaters. Tell us about Six Months to Live. That's not a Three Stooges Plot, is it? It's Three Stooge-like, and certainly we've ripped off, stolen blatantly as 16-year-olds, many Three Stooges gags, and did them ourselves. Um, 
so it was greatly influenced by the Three Stooges. So where would you show these films? In classrooms and at home? Or? Yes, exactly. To the other students. Would you charge money? Sure. <laughs> as much as we could get. Usually a quarter. Sam and I first decided to do a horror film after doing research on, on what pictures did well in the markets. And at the time, which was the late 70s, there were still a lot of drive-ins, especially in the Midwest where we grew up. And there were forever horror films playing in the drive-ins on double bills and that, which we always saw and said, God, we can make something better than this. We, there's absolutely no doubt about it. So up until the, like, the time we decided to make a feature film, we had uh, done mainly comedies and decided that uh, horror is the entry level that most people use and decided to make the ultimate experience in horror at the time. Robert Tappert, Bruce Campbell, and myself all bought business suits and uh, matching briefcases and uh, dropped out of school. Then we worked as waiters, busboys, janitors, cab drivers. So how old were you then? Uh, 18. And uh, Bruce was 19 and Robert was 22 at the time. We would sit down and pretend that we were businessmen. That was all part of the filmmaking process. We thought we had to do it because it never occurred to us to go to California because it was 3,000 miles away. And we thought we'd have as good a chance raising money independently and it finally worked. We first got jobs so that we could raise seed money. Then we hired attorneys to put together a legal offering saying in legal terms, if X person invest X amount of money, they own X percentage in this movie that we're going to make. We then made a Super 8 movie called Within the Woods. And uh, this was a small version of the screenplay I had written for Evil Dead. The reason we made this picture was to show the potential investors that these kids, us, that we could make a picture that worked, a horror movie that actually could scare them. I mean, that was our goal, at least. I hope it scared them. We wanted to have a terrible creature, a spirit, something that floated through the woods at a different height than we're used to seeing things. So we used a shaky cam. We came up with a board where we mounted the camera in the middle, and the lens act as the, uh, acted as the axis point, and uh, it's ended up smoothing out the point of view because the longer the board was that the camera was mounted on, uh, it, the jiggle, this, this effect, oh, it's in a very tight air, <laughs> uh, decreased proportionate to the length of the board. So it gave us a very eerily smooth look and uh, it, it seemed to work out okay. Within the Woods was made as the bait for potential investors. But the tricky part was to get them to watch it. What we did was we would call them and say, yes, we're a friend of Dr. Perkinson's, and he's gave you, uh, he has given us your name and said that although he could not invest, you might be able to. Well, uh, I certainly can invest. I, I can't invest. I won't have anything to do with you. Well, why don't you let us come by your house and uh, show you our picture uh, within the woods and see if you might be interested after that. Well, I'm not really interested. Well, we'll be by around 8 o'clock. <laughs> so we'd kind of force our way in and get the foot in the door. Then we'd set up our Super 8 projector and uh, show the movies on his dining room wall, take down some art, and uh, proceed to make them sick, and then hopefully uh, get the investment out of them. We had dentists, a couple of dentists go in. We had some real estate people. But it was tough to get people who had money in, who were who merchants, who owned stores, because a lot of those people had money, and we, we would approach them. They're used to paying money and getting heads of lettuce or bottles of wine, and we wanted them to give us money for nothing, for this movie that might be successful, might not. And I remember we showed this first little Super 8 movie in the, the detergent aisle of a grocery store after it closed to a couple of merchants, and they didn't invest. But we really went to, we went to absolutely anybody who was financially capable of losing all their money. Their perseverance paid off. Hey, on, After dozens of private know. screenings, they finally raised $90,000, and the evil dead got underway. It's got all the ingredients of a classic horror film. Five teenagers, a deserted log cabin, a car that won't start, a thunderstorm, and a tape recorder with a mysterious message. Shut it off. Shut it off. Shut it off. I was the pseudo hero, Ash. 
who was really just one of five generic people at the beginning and then through a, a trial by fire I kind of wise up a little bit and live. Why pseudo healer? Because he's kind of an idiot. You know, if he hears a sound, he goes outside. He looks through doors that you know he shouldn't. So he's not really very smart. But then that's the state for the whole movie, isn't Oh, it? you have to. If you can't, if they were smart enough not to go to the cabin, you wouldn't have a movie. So, you know, they show up and it's a creepy place. Well, let's go in. You know, and they found a tape recorder with some weird sayings on it. Oh, that sounds great. Let's play that. <laughs> you know, and then people are possessed and like, oh, what do we do now? And uh, you can't be too smart the first couple of times. So you let some monsters kill some innocent people. But it's important to have victims. So we were really, five of us were victims. So I was a pseudo hero only because I was really a victim for most of the movie. pressure while you were shooting it? Yes, I felt under great pressure. And it was not artistic pressure, it was all financial pressure. Because there were no expectations on me as a kid. It was all a question of, I have $90,000 of these people's money who I promised I would make a good movie out of. This has got to be good. It's strange, but that's where I was coming from back then. So what do you think would have happened if the movie hadn't been hit? Well, then I would, uh, be selling air conditioners again, which I'm pretty good at. You see this little baby that'll put out 200 BTUs. It'll cool a room basically 20 by 40, and uh, if you want to blow it around with a fan, I got that too. Uh, sell air conditioners was terrible. <laughs> so did they make the money back? In fact, on Evil Dead number one, we've returned to the investors about three and a half times our original investment. How much control did they exercise over the movie? Did they keep in touch and keep an eye on how things were going? No, they were very good to us, actually, the investors. They never hassled us. We would. Uh, we would give them a, a bi-weekly letter to tell them where we were and what was going on. Uh, at this point, the picture is in editing, the picture is uh, in music, the picture is in dubbing. And uh, then we sent them two invitations to the uh, world premiere. <laughs> 